In this next lesson on VAT, I want to look at the difference between input and output VAT. Now, input VAT is the VAT that you as a business would have paid on all your goods or services that are coming into the business. So the goods are coming in, and that's why it's called input VAT. Now, as long as you are a registered uh, VAT dealer, in other words, your turnover must be over a million rand, any VAT that you pay on your goods or services that are to be used in the business can be claimed back. SARS owes you that money back. On the other hand, your output VAT is on all the goods or services going out of the business. So again there, the word, the goods are going out, so that's why it's the output VAT. Now this VAT you collect when you sell your goods or offer services, and that VAT you then owe to SARS. Now these two ledger accounts then get closed off to a VAT control account um, in order to be able to work out whether you owe SARS money or SARS owes you money. Now so the VAT control is just a summary of the input and output that is actually brought together and every second month you have to make a payment to SARS. So the first thing you need to understand the difference and you need to then know how this affects the amount that you owe SARS. So going on then now, once we've got that difference there, overall in when we're working out the VAT, there's one overlying principle with SARS and that is that everything must be fair. SARS does not expect you to pay VAT on something that you haven't been yourself been received. However, if you have legally bought goods for your business, they will refund you that VAT. So just keep that in mind as I go through some examples of fairness. Now I am using the first of your questions in the VAT that, and all I'm going to do is I'm not doing ledger counts, I'm calculating whether we owe SARS money or whether they owe me money. So I'm doing a calculation and I'm working with plus and minuses instead of debits and credits. Now the first thing you're told is that you've got a VAT output of 36,000. So at the end of September you already owe SARS 36,000 from your goods that were sold last month. But you're also told that at the end of September you can claim back there's an input of 16,800. So that would be a minus because that money you can get back from SARS. Now I'm working through the table. I've got the figures already. You, hopefully you've already calculated your figures and I'm just going through how you get it. Right, now the first three entries over there. You are selling. Now irrespective of whether you sell the goods for cash or on credit, the VAT part of it you owe to SARS. So you owe more to SARS. However, when you buy your trading stock, that your input VAT, you can claim it back. So you can minus 3360. Now, your input VAT is not only on your trading stock, it's on any items that you need to run your business. So if you're buying equipment for this business, you could also claim that VAT back. So that will also reduce the amount that you owe SARS. Now, we then get an item called debtors allowances. Now remember debtors allowances is the return of your sales. So some of these goods, the, the debtors have actually returned to you. So whereas you owed SARS money for it uh, when you sold the goods, if they return these goods, you do not owe that to SARS. Remember I said to you, fairness. SARS will not expect you to pay all of this that over if some of those goods have been returned to you. So the VAT, and remember please it's always the VAT amount, not the full amount of the sale return. It's the VAT on the debtors allowances. You can now claim back from SARS or you can reduce the amount that you owed SARS from your sales. Then another concept that comes in is that we give our debtors a discount. Now remember, let's go back. 
you would have sold the goods to the debtor at a fixed amount. Let's take it that this was one sale for sim to simplify it here. So you sold for 6300 and that included the VAT. Okay. Now, in order to encourage that debtor to pay early, you give him a discount. Now, the impact of that is that you will not be receiving the full amount. And this is, again, where fairness comes in. SARS will say, all right, this is a legitimate expense in a business. And if, if you are giving discount to your debtors, the VAT included in that discount, you don't have to pay us. So it's only the VAT on the discount, not the whole amount, just the VAT part of the discount. So you then, again, effectively have sold the goods for less because you're getting less. So you can reduce it by the VAT on the discount. Right, you then move on to a thing called drawings. Now this is when the owner takes goods or stationery for his own use. Now remember, you would have claimed back VAT over here when you bought the goods for the business. Again, fairness comes in. If the owner is taking that for his own use, it's no longer a business cost. And the business entity rule always tells us to keep the owner and the business affairs separately. So if the owner is taking the goods for his own use, you cannot claim that VAT back. So because you claimed it back before as a minus, you now actually owe that money to SARS. And then, the last one, you get a bad debt. Now again, that's related to your sales. You sold goods to a debtor, which included VAT. You are not going to get that money. The debt has been written off. So again, fairness will come and sales will say, well, if you've got a bad debt and you are not been paid, we don't expect you to pay the VAT over to us. So the VAT included in the bad debt bad debt, not the full bad debt, just the VAT included, you can claim back. You can cancel off your sale. Now, it's not always easy to understand these things about the discount and the bad debts. But remember, what we're doing is saying that VAT was included in these figures. That VAT we are not going to receive and therefore we do not have to pay that over to SARS. So we're reducing the amount we owe. And then if you also just do a calculation, well, if you've set it out like this, you can just plus and minus, and in this case, we owe SARS 18,969. Be aware that you might have come out with a negative figure, in which case SARS owes you money. Now, there's various ways that people do this calculation. I mean, you might like to do columns and put your input and output separately and do the plus and minuses under those columns. Or probably the easiest is just to go to one simple column and just start with the principle of I owe SARS money. And what are each of these doing to the amount that I owe?